Am I a diva? I totally think so. Today on Behind the Velvet Ropes, we're going to meet some other designing divas, the women that you love to love and wear. So don't go anywhere because I'm getting out of bed. designing women we're going to talk to two right now Dana Buckman and her partner Karen Harmon they have a store right here on 57th and Park so let's go in and meet them hey girls how are you how you doing fine how Dana are you? and Karen Hi. so the store is called Dana Buckman but you guys are partners and you're Karen right. we have to get to the bottom of this <laughs> okay now Dana you started you did your own thing first before you hooked up with Karen so how long did you have the Dana Buckman line I think it was about a year a year and a half and it was mainly knitwear and then I wanted to go into woven so I needed a woven expert and there she is <laughs> so give me the tour of the store now this is a beautiful mohair but lightweight, light as a feather, oh, and very yeah. soft. I would wear it's that. It's actually knitted. Sure. Love and that. it looks fabulous with navy and, of course, with all the olives you see behind me. $338. That's modest. It is. Yeah. We try to um, think a lot about what it's like also to have to earn the money and pay for the clothes. Mm -hmm. Right. And make sure it's a good investment. Yeah, she works hard for the money, that's true. <laughs> and speaking of working hard for the money, we have an entirely reversible opera <gasps> coat over here. Oh, can I try it, that on? Of course you can. Oh, wow. It's fabulous. I love that. That's me. And then wow. it reverses entirely. You just turn it inside out. And it's silk, quilted silk velvet on the so other side. So you think female designers know more than men because they actually wear the clothes? They have an edge. They have an edge. Um, we also know how women live, which is an important thing in designing these days. We know that women have no time. No time. I have two kids, a sleeping husband. I have four <laughs> seconds to get dressed, never go anywhere at night. So I use that to inform my point of view. And Karen lives We're just the, the wild nightlife. <laughs> oh, so you, so you complement each other. Night. Absolutely. Yeah. Why did you decide also to open up your store here? Because you sell in just about every major department store you know, across the country. Well, we use the store as a laboratory. We can sometimes ship things here. We're maybe not ready to ship out to the rest of the country. It's really a great opportunity for us to get grounded in reality. Karen and I spend a lot of time on fittings, just wow. making sure that yeah. all the pieces fit different body types because we're all built differently, but that it's fully recognizing a woman's round spots. Well, you guys go a little higher. What size do you go up to also? 16. See that? I think there's a lot of forgotten women out there that love fashion. Right. But don't necessarily, well, they can't find it. But well, we also design. have a plus size line that we've just, oh. and it's been around for a couple of years now, and it's getting great response. And a lot of women actually shop in all sorts of departments. You know, we come in all shapes and sizes. I know. We it's girls. All different. <laughs> you guys have never been considered trendy. I mean, you never go with the latest trend. How come you don't, you decided not to go that way? Well, first of all, we really have to sell. <laughs> We really have to sell clothes to women, and I think uh, when your emphasis is on servicing women and not servicing your own editorials, it shifts entirely because there aren't that many trendy women really across country. Most women buy clothes to be well-dressed, well-groomed, and professional. Most and, women aren't 18 and 118 and pounds, exactly. and that's okay. <laughs> and that's okay, and most, trendy, most trends only look good on models. So it's we're not true. dressing models is, is the real answer to it. We're dressing women. Real, even models don't look gorgeous when they're not done. I wish women 
could see a photo shoot for a model. I wish they could see when the they look, and after. when they look <laughs> through the magazines and they feel so bad about themselves. But you know what? You know, That's the designers. I have to like turn it back to to all of the designers, all you guys, because you all use young models. If you were to use a model that was not you specifically, forties, mm fifties, -hmm, right. and sixties, mm -hmm. like I love Carmen. You know that model She's with the one. She's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that most designers are not really using older women? Why don't they use them more often? Right. I think it's. I think we should. I think we should. I think we will. Really well, okay, should. I'm available. I'm <laughs> Are available. You free? Well, and I'm um We're cheap, but I'm not free. What do you argue like about? I can't imagine. Lapel color, shape. shape, shape of the lapel. I think um, this is too wide. No, it's not. It's fabulous like that. No, it's a little wide looking. You know. <laughs> like, do you like this treat? Yeah. Oh, this is. Oh, but it's fabulous. And then we start we selling like to each that. other. And then, and then, but Dana, think of this. Think you can wear this on the weekends oh, too. And you can dreaming, imagining, and then, and then sometimes we'll have to leave the topic for a day or two, mm -hmm. and then come Just back. Just let it. Okay, simmer. Karen, I'll I'll give it on the velvet jacket. If what do you I'll think? I'll see your velvet. I'll raise you <laughs> four yarn dies. Let me put a little braid on the jewel neck blouse. So you do work it out eventually. Oh, oh, yeah. It works oh, yeah. very well. It's been. However many years, very happy collaboration. Yeah. Well, that was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, great. this is fabulous. So, what time is it now? I don't know. It's like it's six o'clock. It's six o'clock, <laughs> and I know they're going back to work. It's six o'clock in the morning, guys. I don't know. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. For we are on the very lovely Mott Street to talk to two more designing divas, Sally and Jennifer Wang. Today is kind of like a duet day. I don't know. Sally and Jennifer Wang. Who's who? Sally. Sally. Jennifer. Jennifer. Very cute store. Thank you. I love it. So is this the first TV show that you girls have done? Yes. It is. Can you tell? <laughs> Are you nervous? No. A little bit. I really don't know anything about you. I actually asked my <laughs> friend Andrea Linnett of Harper's Bazaar, like, oh, I'm doing this designing diva story. Do you know any cool young designers? And she was like, oh my god, you have to talk to these two girls. Oh, that's so nice. The Wang that's sisters. So but really just started like, you know, cute stuff for us and then cute stuff for our friends and then it just kind of grew. It's like one of those, you know, like lying in bed at night sister things like, let's move to New York and, you know, have a clothing line. Okay. And you did it. Yeah. But that's like incredible. I mean, it takes money to start up a business. It's just because we did it so slowly, like the collection was just five or six pieces when we started. Now, when did you decide to open this? A year ago? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. a year ago. Well, we live in the neighborhood, and we were like, God, you know, this neighborhood is so cool. Is this part of Chinatown? I'm kind of confused. Nolita. It's, it's, where? <laughs> it's called Nolita now. Nolita? What hip name? What does that mean? North of... Little Italy. Oh, I can't even take it. I love this mannequin. Sort of Cuban inspired. <laughs> That's the dress that when you came back from Cuba, you said, I've got to wear. All the women there are, like, so ladylike, so sexy, and the men are just, like... You know, macho. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Studly. <laughs> Is pleather happening? Yeah, if you like that leather look, but you don't want to spend like thousand dollars on a jacket. We want a Wang fashion show. Have you ever had one? No, not yet. But we we really want to have a show too. It's, it looks like a lot of fun. It's expensive. It is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't sure. even know. I love it. They're just so you kind of like just go <laughs> by the seat of your pants. <laughs> this is what we have for holiday. We had to do some sparkly stuff. Love that. Love it. That would look adorable on you. Mm -hmm. It would. It would. Charge it. <laughs> <laughs> I love, you guys are really pocket fanatics. I yeah. Mean, everything has po little cute pockets. What does that mean? Where does that come from? That's true. Yeah, we're obsessed with pockets. Like with the with this skirt, too. Like I wear this all the time, and I put everything in here, so I don't have to bring a purse with me. Yeah, we have to try not to put pockets on everything. Sometimes we're like, okay, this one skirt is not going to have a pocket on it. Do you guys ever argue, like, I like this, I don't like it? No. All the time. Yeah, we fight all the time. Who wins? I think that's why we're still in business together, because nobody really wins. We, we, like, cool off, and then we kind of, like, compromise. This is the Barney's Mailer, and you're in it. It's... The twelfth sign. Yeah. What sign are you? Ah, Scorpio. There you go, pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're really excited. This is our first piece of advertising. Love those Wang girls. Now we're gonna head to designing diva Cynthia Rowley. But first, 
I love Sigerson Morrison shoes. They have a store here, and I'm gonna see if any of the girls are in. I'm here. The shoe goddess is here. Carrie. Hello. How are you? How are you? Good. <laughs> I was just admiring all your shoes, oh, and I have you. a pair. Great. That lasted forever. Now you recently won CFDA award. Yeah, that was quite an honor. Big surprise. A lot well, of fun. It was for new talent. Yes. Um, the Perry Ellis Award for Best Accessory Design. Excellent. Yeah, it was exciting. Now, I know that you sell to a lot of major department stores like Barney's and Bergdorf, but why did you decide to open up your own store? Customers said, you know, I've been buying your shoes at Bergdorf's for years. I had no idea your collection was so huge. And we said, well, yeah, you know, because we're showing you the whole thing. And suddenly people really get it and they become addicted to the shoes. And they come and they're like, ooh, and now I need this in this color and I need, you know, this heel height. And so it sort of makes sense to them to see the entire collection. This is for fall. We have loads and loads of colors. Color, lots of rich dark reds and a lot of sort of glossy materials which is really nice chocolate brown high heels low heels little flat ballerinas I love those those are very fun your prices are very reasonable because right. I bought these sandals and I was like wow that's practically free well yeah I mean we don't do huge amounts of advertising so we don't have to build advertising into or into the price of the shoes I mean it's about sort of making the shoe as, as beautiful as possible Love those. those are really nice gray satin very pretty on a heel really simple very elegant little detail here two hundred nine dollars yeah. that is so amazing because a lot of designer shoes are four and five hundred dollars. well I know our boots are four and five hundred dollars but the shoes aren't there's no reason why they should be and they're great they're made in Italy and we use really beautiful silk satins and... But what I love you, you have all the shoes stacked up. You don't have, everything is just showing. Yeah, you, you can, can just show see it, it all. You That's so cool. See. Yeah, it's great. And so, also you can see when women panic, like you don't have much, you're running out of things. It's quite funny. So what is this, Mott? What number Mott? Mott, 242 Mott. 242 Mott yeah. What's the phone number? 219-3893. And that's 212. Yes, of course. We are boogieing all the way up to 72nd and Columbus to my gal pal Betsy Johnson to see what's cooking up there. Hello! <laughs> A burst of power oh. Betsy Johnson. A burst of like, what am I here? You have very good employees here. Cool. I came in, yeah, I saw yeah. everybody oh, windexing. All our family is wonderful. Hey, Betsy! My I, niece. She's family. Oh, family! Nepotism. Yeah, this is Betsy, I my love. niece. Mm -hmm. Howdy. God. Okay. So wow. come in. Come okay. into your store. You have yeah, been we're trying to sleek up the old image. What was wrong with the old Johnson image? Uh, well, I think Ultra really made us think twice about who's the customer. Ultra is the more we expensive were quite line. More expensive, same customer hopefully, but just with a little more money, mm -hmm. more of the, you know, kind of starlet or performer or whatever. What's in your bag? Look at this bag. Uh, this is like I'm my favorite ten year old bag. This? this look at this. And my baggy poo. With what Lulu's is, teddy bear she gave me. Lulu is Betsy's daughter who models in the show. Who has the flu at the moment, so she's not here. She wanted to come up. I love this bag. You're just Isn't such that a, a great bag? color. It's my favorite bag. What's new here? Jeez, I don't recognize it. It's like ever. Let's go upstairs. Let's go upstairs. Like that. Okay. And what I'm trying to get is a balance between, you know, me and and. Reality. reality. You and reality. I don't know. Reality. This is reality. This is reality. You are reality. This is like my living room. I'm emptying my apartment for the new store, basically. My statues, my paintings, my vases. So what's going to be left in your house? It's, I could take half the stuff out of my house and maybe I could walk around it. It's so cluttered. It's like... You're going through a metamorphosis, a change, something. Yeah, it's... um. New hairdo? It's, uh, yeah, new hairdo. The business is always exciting to me because if I can get that little special killer through, it's incredible. But it's high risk. Nobody thinks, who's going to buy that? Nobody knows. That Hollywood dress la a year and a half ago? No, oh, please, not Someone's the Hollywood. The, the, it's been the main dress for us for a year and a half. This one has been, has made our business. 
this past dress year is and major business. And this dress How much is was that? merchandised like, no way, no, no, we can't have that. It's too That's like three hundred eight dollars is not a lot of money. It's not cheap. It's not well, it's cheap, not like, like expensive. The thing is, it's hand dyed. It's silk charmeuse. It's a staple. I never put all the eggs in one basket. What does that mean? It means you do a lot of color stories, you do a lot of shape stories, you do a lot of lengths. I almost pretend I'm like 10 different girls when I do my collection. I pretend I'm 13, I'm going to bar mitzvah. Then I pretend I'm the prom going, graduating, getting married, the bridesmaids person. Then I pretend I'm my sister who's very conservative and wears little suits. Then I pretend I'm the little sex kitten and the skin tight and the spikes and the da da da. So I just pretend I'm all these different people. We got a people. Sybil thing going on here. <laughs> She's like Sybil here. Now, you've been working for Betsy 12 years. Yes. So you must really love her. Yeah, started with her when we only had the three stores in Manhattan. People seem to stay with her. I mean, they don't just come and go. If you work here, yeah, you can no. make a career. She's great to work for. She treats us really well. Sweetest person. You've been designing for many, many years. And I know we've discussed this. 31 I, years. 31 years. I remember the first jacket I ever had from Alley Cat that Betsy designed. And it seems like all of a sudden now, after all these years, you're sensing something changing in the fashion industry. And you're opening up a new store in Soho. You're polishing yeah. up the stores that you have. What, is there something right. in the air? Like, what's going on? called survival of the fittest, survival of the best. I mean, you have to be really good right now to, to stay in business. And it's a bitch of a time because it's a very trendless time. It's like the Warhol, you're only good for 15 minutes. That's how long a trend is lasting. I mean, we're global, we're websited, we're immediate, we're, you know, not like the old days where it's, Let's have our store, fun time. Who cares about what anyone else is doing? I think we have to hang on to our own identity, which the new Soho store is really going to establish. Hopefully it'll be a formula for our really great new stores, like in London in a couple months. Oh, you're opening in London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, how many We're stores? very close to a store there. How many stores do you have now, currently, in around 20, the world? 20. 20. <laughs> 20 stores. 20. But you know how it so happened. So what are you whining about? Then, like, you, you know, doing... it's just, we went into retail because after our first season, 19 years ago, we made too much for the second season. And we couldn't give it away. And Annie Flanders from the old Soho News Detail Magazine said, why don't you open a store? I know a little store on Thompson Street. We didn't know how to run a store. We didn't. It was, it was kind of like a closet of leftover stuff. But we found our True Blue customers, and it really inspired me because I thought, whoa, this girl likes my belt, she likes my hat, she likes my shoes, she likes all the funny stuff. Thompson Street is like so cute. It's like I a know, jewel box at your like first store. Why are you opening up this mega 2,500 well, foot store? Thompson, although it's been a wonderful street of strange, wonderful little stores, it's just that kind of out of it mm -hmm. location. And it's, it's small also too. tiny. And there's no office space and there's no basement space and it's just uh, and so it got down they couldn't carry ultra, they couldn't carry shoes, they couldn't we couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So we started looking about a year and a half ago. I mean so was the, the Manhattan Mall. Mm -hmm. And it just took forever to find the, a good location with a fair, an over-the-top but a fair rent compared to because it must what be outrageous. Else is it's the, impossible. I mean, and now everybody's looking, and everybody has a lot of money. Whereas smaller people like Anna and Cynthia and Vivian and me, and you know, we don't have those mega bucks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to go for that real estate, but we have to. Mm -hmm. So when we are in Soho, to me, it's got to be your best. Best, best foot forward. When I think of Betsy Johnson, I think empire, her no, empire. No, empire, shmempire compared to <laughs> Calvin and Donna, you know? But you're so And all those more. perfume, perfume dollars perfume. coming in from you're licensing. You're coming out. You're coming out with ultra perfume. It's our own private label fragrance that is more like 
uptown boudoir, sexy, sensuous, a little more Sounds grown up, sophisticated bottle. Ultra has really helped my image in that. I'm making $1,500 dresses. And I'm selling! I'm selling them. But, you know, and all of a sudden, because of cashmere sweaters and expensive embroideries, and, it's, you know, I'm taken more seriously. Mm -hmm. That's really done it. In 20 years You'd of being in business, we never felt, we never were profitable enough to grow. Because you really... I can't believe that. No, I mean, you have all these stores. You, you just... make a mistake in this business, you don't sell for one month and you're dead. So if, if your June delivery sucks, you need three months to make up for a bad month just to get you back on even keel. I want to know one last question. After 31 years, is it really hard to keep that passion up? You know, is it really hard to always come up with something new and something different? I don't think you can last a day in this business if you don't love the razor's edge, insecure, you know, craziness of it. The, the, the time, the clock, the stopwatch that just keeps moving and you have to keep up with it. It's like, you know, the donkey, like, going after that carrot all mm -hmm. the time. If you don't love it, you're long gone from it. Mm -hmm. It's like being a New Yorker. If you don't love New York, you're not here. So everyone, you should have a big opening party. Because then we'll have Everybody a big Christmas come. party. Yes, yes. Christmas, that's November. You can be our social advisor for I that. can do that. <laughs> I can do that. I can be a social advisor. I'm very good socially. I love everything that you've been doing. I remember all your stuff. And I really appreciate that you talking to us on Behind the Velvet And when Ropes. I'm dead, you'll go up and have a good party and model and wear the clothes uh, and celebrate. What do you mean you're dead? Where are you going? <laughs> oh, she's never. I'm going before she's going. I'm telling you. You're gonna we'll be, go together. You're going to be in a yellow wheelchair now, dueling wheelies, right? A yellow, no more pink, a yellow wheelchair, like tooling around with Lulu. Okay? That would be my new runway trip. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> it was great. I'm in funky Soho now, of course, with my Moe Chandon, because I never go anywhere without it. We're going to take this bottle, and we're going to go meet designing diva Cynthia Rowley in her store, and maybe try some clothes on. She designs the cutest, sweetest, young, happening stuff at good prices, too. Cynthia, here, designing diva Cynthia Rowley. Oh, champagne. Hey. I love champagne in the morning. In the morning? Mm -hmm. is Anytime. This, Anytime. Is this your favorite? Especially. Moe. Definitely. Excellent. This is buzzing. This store, there's like people shopping, buying. What's going on? Oh, you should be here on a Saturday. It's like a, we have to have a... Hugh has to be the bouncer out in front. <laughs> Hugh is You have the... to be cool enough looking to get <laughs> in or else he doesn't let you in. The velvet rope. You have to get behind the velvet rope. Exactly. exactly. So there's a velvet rope at Cynthia's. Right. I love it. So sit. Let me okay. sit. I'll put this down. We'll have to have some later. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to that. OK. Designing diva Cynthia Rowley, you have your own store. Why did you decide to open up your own store? I think the first thing was I wanted a place where everything could be all together, because you work so hard to put it all together for the shows. And it's like every detail, the shoes, the bags, everything. And then all of a sudden, the second the show is over, literally, you never see the stuff together again. Your stuff is edgy, trendy, but fun. Oh, that's so nice. That's perfect. Thanks. I said it right. I love it. <laughs> well, you could be a testimonial on the video there. How do you know what your customer wants? Well, that's why, that's actually why having a store is so great, because you definitely know, like, right then and there, exactly what they like. So you heard it here first on Behind the Veil Ropes. Cynthia Rowley slings hot dresses over the counter. <laughs> Do you, are you she, she doesn't sling hair, she's like dresses. No, so you actually Is come for here to go. <laughs> no. Yeah. So you actually like work here a couple times a month. Come or... here, I go to Chicago. We have stores all all over, so I Where? go. Where else? East Hampton, Chicago, Los Angeles. We're opening in a couple weeks in South Beach. And then we have stores in Japan and Korea, so I go there too. Do you do shoes? Bags, hats, everything. Uh, yeah, dresses, t-shirts, sunglasses, coats, sunglasses, sunglasses. So you've expanded, like. And soon, soon what? Soon you will be dressing in head-to-toe Cynthia Raleigh. Menswear, and where are you gonna Next sell spot? it? 
We're gonna try to find a little space here. I don't know where we can squeeze it in, but look at his face. <laughs> Is he all excited? Are you all excited? Well, yeah, if we can find a place to squeeze it in. We may just have it hanging from the ceiling, so. We're gonna take a tour of the Cynthia Rowley store. Here we have the accessory department. <laughs> This is like so cute. We we'll just make these little bags like this, the little lip totes. I have one of these. You do? Yeah. I use a for, I use it. I have. If you, if it's not big enough, one of them, you can just line them up on your arm. Very you go cool. out at night. Now this is a eyewear case. Okay. That's for is the that, eyewear. But like you can wear I know, it as a bag. I know. People buy them just as a bag. They want to buy them separately, and we say, okay, well, it's ninety-eight dollars, and we'll throw the glasses in for free. <laughs> for free. <laughs> These are show shoes from the show. So that's why we have special one of a kind things. Like nobody else has this shoe. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> no, they're really great. I love them. <laughs> JK is J Jody Kidd. Oh. Oh, that was the name. That's the model. Uh -huh. I it looks like Jackie Kennedy. Oh, maybe it was. These were Jackie. Jackie so O. Oh, these are Jackie O <laughs> shoes. <laughs> so <sorry. laughs> Like when we were talking about like a lot of hand work and all that. So this is all pieced together, then embroidered, then with the little nail heads. So it's like a lot of work. So how do you get your prices to stay so reasonable considering all this work and I know, it's fabric? Re that's really hard. It's really hard. Yeah. I mean, we have a range, like some things. Oh, that looks cute on her. Wow. Oh, come out here. This is a customer. Can we see you? <laughs> She's a customer. That's great. That looks beautiful. This is Cynthia. And you know, if, this is, if she says it looks good, it, it looks, looks really good. good. It looks beautiful. We're gonna find wow. the right size. She's buying that skirt because <laughs> she looks good in it. It's okay. You don't have to buy it. Don't have, feel any pressure. <laughs> We're like, come to her with the Will gun. That be cash or charge? No. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Oh, this I love this stuff. This is um, flocked wool gauze. And it's um, flocked wool. Go that says like yeah. wallpaper. <gasps> you could do wallpaper. <gasps> That's a great idea. No, I'm serious. With little figures like that. That on is it. so cool. Yeah. Uh, now this kind of looks a little like plaid man in a way. Is that a little inspiration here of dad? Uh, maybe a little bit. That's so fabulous. this is again. This is like all embroidered. This is um, velveteen that I found an antique pattern and then had it recreated and embroidered on here. So it's so, like this is, like a, I really feel like a lot of hand work and a lot of really special things. So these I are a little more expensive. But you know what I love that I saw on your show? I always love this. It's just so Oh, that fun. is so you, Lauren. It's so me, it's so this me. This is so you. You might wanna, do you wanna slip it on? Start you, yeah, let me slip it on. The minute you put it on, I'm like, oh, it's fun. I feel like fun. Yeah, this is, you could, love that. You could do this. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It was You're great. Welcome. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. That was great. Can we have the champagne now? Yes, we can have the champagne now. Come on. This is this was like such a great show. This is like my designing diva show. And we have to toast with Moet Chandon, which here it is. I was hiding it, hoping that you would forget. Never would I forget. Okay. Let's see. Who can open the hue? Can you do us the honors? Of opening this. Ooh, yum, yum, yum. Mm. Well, oh, this was a great show. get a lot show. of work done when I'm, I get back to the I'm office. sure. <laughs> this was a great show. I want to thank you so much, Cynthia, for oh, being on you. Behind the Velvet Ropes. I love your show. Cheers.